Welcome back, everyone here to Bronx Talks. Today, I got a very special video for you guys. We are going over six Yankee free agent targets, part two, to our first video. Um, and yeah, let's get right into it. So at number six on our list, we have Michael Fulmer, relief pitcher, pitched for the Tigers and the Twins last year, was traded to the Twins at the trade deadline. And he's a name that has been mentioned with the Yankees for a long, long time. He's been in many, many, many trade rumors. The Yankees have tried going after him numerous times. And I think they could definitely be involved in the sweepstakes to get Michael Fulmer. I think he'd be a really, really solid piece in that bullpen, pitched to a 3.39 ERA um, this past year. And not only would I think he'd be a good piece in the bullpen, he can also give you a little bit of long relief there too, um, which adds to many of our relievers that can pitch in long relief as well. Um, so I feel like he'd be a really, really solid piece and a big contributor in that bullpen. Very true. At number five, we have Brendan Nemo. Now he's going to be 30 years old next year. He was a center fielder for the New York Mets in 2022. And other than Aaron Judge, He's probably the best outfielder in this year's free agent class. He hit 274 with a 134 WRC plus and a 5.4 F4, which was the third highest among all outfielders in 2022, just behind Aaron Judge and Mookie Betts. Now, Nemo has had a few injuries over the past few years, which might make teams hesitant to give him as much as seven or eight years, especially since he's 30. Although I could very well see him signing a six-year deal for around $150 million because this guy is a machine and he would be perfect for the Yankees. Lefty bat, pull side power, speed, great defense. And whether the Yankees do or do not bring back Aaron Judge, he will really make their team better. Yeah. Um, at number four on our list, we got Matt Carpenter. Uh, Matt Carpenter obviously was signed to the Yankees in late May last year and had an immediate impact on the club. He was really, really, really good. Um, he was hitting home runs like day and night. I mean, it was like every day he was hitting a home run. Um, he's a really, really solid left-handed bat, um, can play a few different positions, not at an elite level, but he does have that flexibility. And, you know, he would be a really, really good piece to bring back to the Yankees. Um, He was obviously a big contributor and a big reason to their success in 2022. And I think in 2023, he could be a really, really solid piece, whether that's him coming off the bench, whether that's him, you know, spot starting or something like that. Um, I feel like he could really, really be a good piece. Fangraphs does project him to get a one-year deal around six to ten million dollars. But let me tell you, I would really, really like to bring Matt Carpenter back to the Yankees. At number three, we have Tommy Canley. Now he's a familiar face for Yankees fans, and he was actually drafted by the Yankees too, then picked up by the Rockies in the Rule Five draft. And fast forward to 2017. He gets traded from the White Sox to the Yankees along with David Robertson and Todd Frazier, which turned out to be a very good trade for the Yankees. And then going into the 2021 season, he signed a two-year deal with the Dodgers, barely pitched. He had Tommy John in 2020, only pitched one inning for the Yankees, then didn't pitch at all in 2021. And over the past three years, he's pitched a total of 14 innings. So you're taking a bit of a gamble here, although it's not like you're going to give this guy a big contract. Um, low risk, decently high reward. He was a very, very electric pitcher with the Yankees. That's why a lot of Yankee fans like him. Seemed like a really good guy in the clubhouse. Always brought the energy. So the Yankees clearly liked him. They drafted him and traded for him. So I wouldn't be surprised if he comes back. Absolutely. Would certainly love to bring Canley back. At number two on our list, we got Andrew Chafin, uh, relief pitcher, previously played for the Tigers um, this uh, past season. Um, this year in 64 games, he was two and three 
um, pitched to a 2.83 ERA in 57.1 innings and did rack up 67 strikeouts. He is a really, really solid pitcher. Um, He is left-handed, left-handed reliever. And if you add him to that bullpen, I think it would create a really, really nice balance um, and a nice mix between righties and lefties. You have two really nice relievers in Chafin and Wandy Peralta. And I think it would just be a great mix and really, really balance out that bullpen. He also does have the very, very nice mustache. Kind of looks like Catfish Hunter. And I think he'd be a really, really fun guy um, to have in that bullpen and really, really balance it out. And um, I am really, really high on him. And I really want to see him in pinstripes this season. I think you're spot on. And with Chapman going, Lutke possibly going, I mean, you really need another high high leverage lefty reliever. All you have is Wandy Peralta. So I think he is perfect. At number one, we have Kodai Senga. He is 30 years old, and last year he was a starting pitcher for the Softman Hawks in Japan. Now, unlike other Japanese stars, he does not have to be posted. He's old enough where if he wants to be an MLB player, he can, and there's a lot of reports saying that he's going to join the MLB free agent class. So, who is he? He is a pitcher for Japan, and he is pretty elite, comparable to Masahiro Tanaka, a four-pitch mix, a high 90s fastball, and along with a lot of other Japanese pitchers, a great splitter. And he's projected to be a three or four starter, so he could sort of take that spot from Tyone, fill that void, and I'd say more of an upside because the only reason he's projected to be like a three or four starter is because they just don't know how he's going to pitch against major league lineups. Although this guy was pitching very well in Japan. So you get him with a uh, MLB pitching coach, see what he can do. And I think it's very, I think it's crucial for the Yankees to get a starting pitcher. I'm not saying they have to go after DeGrom or Rodon, although I would like to see them get a legit starting pitcher. You know, not not just someone to to eat innings. So that's that's yeah. where Kodai single falls in. Yeah, and I I think you know you get Kodai with uh, Matt Blake, and I, you know I think um, developing his game and bettering his game even more. Um, so yeah, I think he'd be a really really great fit, um, and I would love to see him in pinstripes. 